I really felt like if the bear market, if the macro economy never, you know, f*** us over, right? <laughs> Matt, is gonna blow up already. Cryptocurrency exchange. Non-fungible. We only take Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency. Favorite cryptocurrency. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of the ChainDB podcast, the podcast about all things cryptocurrencies. I am back and thank you so much, Jackie, for uh, covering for me. Um, for coming for both I of us. I can't wait for you to be back. I was oh, telling okay. everyone like, wow, where is Dan? I think some of our commenters, some of our subscribers miss Dan as well, but Dan, you're back. Oh, very, very honored. Thank you. I think you're being too kind, <laughs> but happy to be back. So I think um, it's been a while since I've seen Jackie as well. So I thought it was a great opportunity for us to kind of like recap some of the very interesting things that are happening in the crypto space. A lot of things uh, happened last week and over the weekend or so. Mm -hmm. And so I think one of these episodes is really just looking at the news, looking at some of our updates and our portfolio and like I mentioned just most recently about portfolio have you had any updates wow okay we start with yours first for me <laughs> honestly I don't want this is a bit dry but I really haven't um, done too much I think I've only added allocations to like stuff that I already had so mm -hmm. I think when like crypto uh, sorry when, when when ETH went down by a little bit I, I bought into it um, and then some of the other layer ones like um, Phantom also got it so yeah but nothing nothing new for me how about you okay um, so again this is non-financial advice uh, one of our comment one of our comment section he actually mentioned that hey guys you all should actually uh, be careful about what you say mm. um, and I thought that was very uh, timely and um, as a reminder for us to tell people that hey guys this is not financial advice this is just Two guys, very interested in the crypto space, sharing yeah. our thoughts on the crypto space, right? Yeah. For me, um, I haven't done much, to be completely honest as well. Um, I think because in real life, I need some money. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't Bullets. I haven't really uh, on ramp for a while already, um, you know, um, but I did some uh, shift, or I, I shifted some of my positions around, you know, it, previously I was uh, quite bullish on uh, other, um, you know, some counters. Mm. Um, but I, you know, with the new year, right? What I did was basically trim down some of my, my lower conviction stuff. Trim the fat. Trim the fat, and then after that, um, um, there was one new position that I was getting. I'm getting more and more bullish on. It's actually Mattis. Okay. Uh, so it's a new layer two um, uh, solution. Mm -hmm. um, so unlike all layer ones, right? So layer ones are like you know your Terra, your Phantom, and whatnot, which I still have. Um, but Mattis is an L2 solution on ETH network. So essentially, um, it has been growing a fair bit. Um, and I just wanted to share a little bit. I cannot remember all of them, so I'm just gonna like uh, refer to some some stuff on 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 this Twitter thread, right? Actually, never mind. I just roughly <laughs> share. <laughs> uh, so for Mattis, right? It's again, it's a layer two solution. Um, why I was bullish on it? Why I'm bullish on it, right? Is that um, a lot of the thesis of Mattis, right, stems from the original vision from Vitalik himself. Okay. So Vitalik's mom is actually part of the founding team of Metis. Oh, wow. Like, oh, wow. Okay. Like, you know, if if Ethereum were to do a restart, right? Yeah. How that would look like will be Metis. Metis. Because the original, t the, the founding team of Metis, right? Actually talks a lot or draws a lot of their inspiration or architecture of the whole blockchain, right? From uh, Vitalik's uh, original vision of how he envisioned Eve okay. in the first place. Because of Vitalik's mom being part of the core founding team, right? The Mattis team has a lot of direct access to what Ethereum is building on, what, be, what are the challenges that are being faced on the Eve network. So I think that alone, right? Uh, you can trust that the team is, you know, they are probably ahead in terms of thinking what are the scaling uh, mm. problem that if face as a layer one, right? Compared to the other layer twos. La. Compared to the other layer twos, which is basically mm. uh, optimism like and uh, arbitrum, uh, and uh, polygon as well. Mm. Um, so I think that's uh, one of the main reasons the team behind Mattis, right? That's one. Second is that Mattis recently launched a big hackathon. Mm. I think about before the crash, so about one, two months ago. Hackathons are pre decrement Is it called pre decrement Yeah, uh, like pre Predecament of like, um, an influx of new uh, protocols or applications onto the whole ecosystem. Yeah. I think I might have mentioned this before, but like if you look at last year, right, 2020, um, 2021, um, the start of 2021, right, BNB blew up uh, and then Solana blew up. Uh, all these layer ones blew up, right? Before they blew up, right, they did hackathons also mm. to basically entice projects to 
build innovative solutions on their blockchain. Because the blockchain is only as useful as how much activity is happening in that space. Like, yeah. And how innovative the protocol is, right? Mm. Mattis did their recent hackathon. Okay. Um, and I really felt like if the bear market, if the macro economy never, you know, f*** us over, right? <laughs> Mattis is going to blow up already. Like, mm. that to me was like, you know, there were a lot of like activity and uh, uh, new applications being built on it. If, you know, the macro didn't really f*** over, right? Actually, I think Mattis is going to chung a lot more. There are going to be more users trying out all the applications on Mattis. Uh, more people are gonna bridge over their, you know, their liquidity over to try all the different applications on it, right? So that's the second thing why um, uh, second reason why I'm bullish on Mattis. Uh, again, uh, there there was a big hackathon. There were a lot of ecosystem grants and funds being put uh, into the whole uh, network to basically get people to build uh, applications on it, right? Mm. Um, and the third thing on on the whole Mattis, <coughs> there's a few stuff, right? But the third thing is basically this whole idea of the uh, decentralized autonomous uh, companies or the whole concept of like um, DAOs but companies. Mm. So DAC, decentralized autom- autonomous companies, right? It's a concept that Vitalik has shared long time ago, I think about four or five years ago, but it never became a thing. DAO became a thing, but the original vision of Vitalik was that um, companies can become decentralized using um, or his vision of it is basically all companies will be decentralized organizations, which basically is DSC. Mm. Um, but no one really picked on it. Mattis is going to launch a template for companies to be DACs. Okay. What it means is that companies can launch on Mattis, right? And have decentralized payroll system, decentralized um, processes, decentralized, uh, I don't know what. Lah. So everything, think of it as any companies can be decentralized by using the template that Mattis, Mattis is going to launch. Something like that, which is called the whole idea of DSC stuff. Yeah. Um, I haven't really dig, uh, dig deeper on, but the thing, the top process is sound. Yeah. And what they're building is very, very interesting. And I can see it happening also, which is very important for me. Mm, mm, mm. Right. Um, and I thought like, mm, cannot be done until very badly. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so then I, I shifted a fair bit of like my uh, allocations from uh, some other tokens. And I moved it to Matis and it's quite a large holding right now. Are you comfortable to say how many percent of your oh, portfolio um, is Mattis? Sure. Like actually right now, um, I have three core holdings, FTM, Matis and uh, Luna. Okay. Uh, three of them is more than twenty plus percent. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So and the rest are like Chapalang and then uh, Stablecoin. Um. Yeah. So my three core holdings are those three right now. Again, non financial advice. Yes. Uh, it's just me. <laughs> I felt like it was something that I'm comfortable holding and seeing the team execute. Yeah. On the vision. Um. Then. Um. Yeah. I, I think that's something that I'm very comfortable in. The price action is quite okay. Uh, in terms of the rebound recently, although it crashed a fair bit already. Um, and I'm actually thinking of adding even more. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you believe that L2 is here to stay, yep. um, layer two meaning a scaling solution for ETH, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think Mattis is worth looking into. Okay. Um, I think it's quite interesting. They're building a lot of stuff. Yeah, so I think like Jackie mentioned, like no financial advice and of course, like go and do your own like due diligence. But I think it's very interesting to talk about coins and I think we've done it in previous episodes also because like even myself as a crypto media consumer, I think I, I also enjoy hearing what other people are looking at. Yeah. Because it's like coin discovery is so difficult now. There's just so many things to look at, right? And I think it's very interesting to know what people are themselves invested in as opposed to just shilling without being like invested in. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to know also for Mattis, right? It's actually quite undervalued as well uh, from a MCAT over TVL uh, perspective. Okay. Um, so I also, you know, um, you know what on my back is basically uh, Phantom, right? Phantom is way undervalued. Yeah. It's like five, th- 5 billion market cap. Yeah, and then yeah. the the total number of liquidity in it is probably more than five billion right now. So yeah. the ratio is actually less than one. Mm. Uh, Terra also quite uh, undervalued, which is why I'm very comfortable holding them. Uh, Mattis from a, a TVL slash over MCAT perspective, right? Or is it MCAT over TVL? Also quite relatively undervalued. Okay. They're growing very, very fast. Uh, the market cap haven't catch up yet because of macro environment, but there are a lot of liquidity. There are a lot of like... Uh, 
liquidity being staked on a different protocols. Mm. Um, so from that perspective, I'm quite comfortable holding it yeah. um, I, until you know market decides to reflect the actual valuation. Uh. Okay. Um, I think it's probably about. I actually don't know what's the latest market cap for them. Um, mm. Yeah. So so that's that's that lah. So from a technical uh, from a fundamental perspective, right? From a valuation perspective, I think it's still undervalued compared to. You know your boba network, your arbitrum. I actually don't know, um, but Matis is relatively undervalued. Okay. Yep. Okay. Great. So that's uh, something to look at and yes. research further on. But yes. to look at. Yes. Um, I think besides the updates on the portfolio, so there was quite a lot of things that happened over the last week or so. So I think the most recently was um, OpenSea gonna attack. Wow. Oh, do you just hear about another it? Day. And, and I how actually do you haven't. You want to share a little bit more? What yeah. Happened? So I think I mean there's quite a lot of speculation about what happened, a lot of Twitter threads, and like I think the the most summarized one what I read on like I think CoinDesk or something. So like basically what happened was that OpenSea did mention a while back that they were going to um they were going to migrate their smart contract right and so um they were already planning on doing that and so the scammers whether or not they, they purposely planned it specifically to tie in with with this news they basically sent out emails right phishing emails saying that uh click this button to basically get started on your whole migration mm. when in actual fact you don't have to do anything right, right? but so then they sent out this mass email it looked like OpenSea's official, like that the header, even the from, right, the, the email address was something at OpenSea.io. Wow. And so it's so it's like you look at all the those markers, right? You would think, oh yeah, la, like this makes sense. OpenSea did say about the migration. There's this email here. And then like you click the button and then you end up like signing something, right? Um, that's how the, the scammers basically have your signature la, yep. um, to carry out their own their own attack. So right. that happened a month ago. And then basically they executed it like on Saturday, I believe that's when everything happened. Right. And so like about 30 or 40 people like got their NFT stolen, mostly right. like bought apes. Um, and I think like the scammers walked away with about $1.7 million worth of worth of NFTs, which is relatively low, but it's still a lot. La. Of money. You know, yeah. it's still a lot of money. <coughs> and it was quite crazy because I think, again, we don't know how, how much of this is true, but someone else on Twitter was saying that actually people did notice that it was a phishing email and actually warned OpenSea about it a month ago, but uh, they didn't do anything about wow, it. Wow, OpenSea, damn jalas, yeah. Uh, again, if this is if this is true, la. so I think a lot of people are blaming OpenSea because like, hey, how could you let this happen? But also it's not really OpenSea's fault because the phishing emails, like anyone can just attack any company and then pretend to be them. Yeah. Like we've seen it in, in Singapore, particularly with like the whole SMS scams with OCBC Bank and things like that. I don't know, like there's been a lot of uh, negative press with OpenSea. We also see like a lot of alternatives coming up, like looks rare and like, you know, other other exchanges also have their own NFT um, marketplaces like booming and call coming up like Coinbase and Binance and things like that. Like, do you think OpenSea still has a stronghold? Is it time to move on from OpenSea? Like, what are your, what, what's your take on it? As with all marketplaces, I feel like as long as you have the listings, yep. the supply, right, you will, it's very hard to fight against that mode, like, you know? Mm. Like, OpenSea right now probably have the largest directory of NFTs and listings available. Yep. Hence, they have the highest, um, you know, liquidity, lah. Right, um, and I think it's very hard to compete against that, mm. which is why you know the new you know open sea competitors, right? They're trying very hard. They're trying to like airdrop uh, um, tokens to get people to use them. But I think it's very tough. Is like, how do you fight against displacing eBay, eBay? <laughs> or in Singapore or like how do you fight against displacing Shopee, Lazada? It's top of mind already, right? Mm. Um, it's tough. I feel like it's tough. I feel like. It's very easy. I, I don't know lah, but <laughs> it looks very easy for OpenSea to fix this. They just need to hire a dedicated team yep. to look at all of these security issues and do education and do proper communication, which they have. I think one or two months ago, they hired a director of like communication. Um, he put himself out there and he say like, "Hey guys, I'm a new hire, um, and then what I'm looking to uh, improve." for OpenSea, right, is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. He was the one that came out and say also to talk about, you know, there was a whole period of time where they were talking about listing. The IPO. The IPO the thing, Puhar, right? Yeah. I think he was the one that came out and say, no guys, like I'm here and like, mm. you know, I, 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 me joining OpenSea was to improve all this communication and look into all this community related stuff. I think they should do a better job in terms of that front, mm. which all of this problem should be easily 
fix uh, and you know they're number one right now they are far number one if they really lose to someone else right they they really yeah. deserve it uh, like <laughs> so so what a lot of people don't know because right? I, I a lot of uh, friends who enter the nft space and they don't really understand like okay what is open c um and the difference between like minting on a website then how come it's on open c right actually mm. Um, the reason why Jackie said that they have listings is because OpenSea is as useful as the number of people that are listing to sell there. Mm. Just because you have the NFT in your wallet, actually you can actually view it in any marketplace that allows you to view mm. Ethereum-based NFTs. Mm. Which is why like on, on Luna, so you can look at something that you bought on Random Earth on... Um, what's it called nowhere yeah no nowhere dot art right yeah uh, so it's the same like if you if you own some, an nft on an ethereum blockchain you can look at it at OpenSea or you can look at it at looks rare yeah but a lot of the listings are on OpenSea. yeah a majority of it are yeah. on OpenSea. but i think going back to the ebay analogy right like then again before carousel opened up in singapore people did use ebay and this new company managed to come Takes about time, and then i mean carousel then, took what 10 years, uh, 8 mm. years. Um, yeah, so at any one point in time, eBay could have done something. Mm. They didn't. They didn't. Yeah. So that's my point. Uh, and complacency, I, if, if they really lost that number one spot, it's due to complacency and they would have deserved it. Uh. Yeah, it's just you just need to communicate and just, you know, for the community or launch the f- token, right? Everyone's asking, <laughs> can you drop me a... When token. When token, right? Just all of their competit- competitors are doing it. What's stopping you from doing it, right? So if you... You know, if you lose the number one spot, it's really on you already, lah, right? Um, it's, 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 they make so much money. Mm. They make ridiculous amount of money, and like you know, it's such an easy thing for them to fix, lah. I, I, I mean, I don't know them, <laughs> but when you think about it, they are number one, and if they lose their spot to someone else, yeah. that won the market share by airdropping token, which they could have done easily, which they could have done easily, <laughs> you know, they have so much money, <laughs> they make so much revenue already. <laughs> So then, I mean, that's my only comment, lah. Yeah. Open C when token, when token. Uh, the other thing that also happened, I think, early last week. Oh no, late last week or either early this week was that. Um, so in Canada, and a lot of people are commenting about it because it kind of shows why crypto is so useful, right? So mm-hmm. in Canada, there has been protests by truckers. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's been you know like stopping the whole like economic movement because if truckers can't move things around Canada, then. Um, you're screwed la. yeah you're essentially screwed so what the government decided to do is that instead of listening to them and you know like listen listen to the demands and see whether they were reasonable or not um, they enacted the um, the emergencies act and basically the government now has full control to freeze any bank account and so they can they what they did was that they froze the bank account of the protesters so that they don't have the resources to carry out this protest huh yeah, which seems so weird because to me it's like this. This is like a mini rant of mine, right? Like Canada yeah. is known to be quite progressive, quite progressive. liberal. Yeah, and we see in in the US also, right? Like you would normally associate the Democrats by being the progressive liberal party, and yet when it comes to the crypto movement, right? It is the Republicans that are a little bit more open to using crypto. Mm. The Democrats are a little bit more close to it, and someone like Justin Trudeau, who is like a little bit more progressive. Th- this is quite a weird, like draconian, yeah. like movement. Yeah. Uh, and so then, like obviously, a lot of people came out to say this is exactly why crypto is going to be useful, la. And something that uh, Vitalik actually mentioned that was interesting was that he's saying this is an example of why crypto isn't going to revolutionize every like the financial markets. It's actually going to bring back the rule of law because while governments are so obsessed with with citizens following the law, the governments themselves are not necessarily doing something that's mm. lawful in that sense. Yeah. Even though it's based on the Emergencies Act, so. He's saying that with crypto, at least now the power is then shifted back to like the people, uh, And as much as the government can try and block crypto accounts, you can't, you, you can't, you can't block the movement of of people like transferring their money across. But I just thought it was like wow, that was that was really eye opening for something to happen like in this century by a very like progressive like government. Do you do you think that Singapore should have should legalize crypto then? I think it's very. I think it's so 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 this is where I have an internal debate, right? So when when Singapore the MAS ban like crypto um, exchanges, Binance, a, yeah, a, 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 so they they ban Binance, but then they also ban like advertising right after Crypto.com like put one big giant banner like mm-hmm. everywhere, right? They never really did ban lah. They just say you're not allowed to. Yeah. Uh, no no no. They say you shouldn't. If if you are uh essentially a, an an exchange or like a digital like currencies like platform or whatever um you shouldn't advertise you yeah. can only advertise on your own like yeah. like platforms right and the UK did the same thing also like a week after and to me like it just seems like what, what this reminds me of is the uh, the e scooter and the e cigarette ban where like it's you don't understand it ban 
you there is no like effort to try and like find a middle ground. So like so like here's the thing, right? Like if you want to open up a brokerage account to invest in stocks or in equi- like in equities, um, you're able to do that. The brokerages can advertise, you know, IG markets can advertise, uh, DBS, uh, Vickers can advertise poems and everything. All they need to do is when you open up that bank account, they have to ask you a series of questions, right? Do you maybe did you have a degree in finance, maybe, or did you have a background in finance? Uh, how long have you been investing? All these things, right? They ask you these series of questions, and if it meets their benchmark or their standards, you can open a brokerage account, uh, and yeah. they basically done in like you, you've answered enough to prove to them that you know what you're doing. Mm. Why can't we do that for crypto? As opposed to saying crypto companies cannot advertise because retail investors don't know enough about the space. I think that was I'm kind of par- paraphrasing, but that's what the government said, right? And to me, like, wow, that seems so like backward almost, like yeah, um, yeah. But even the 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 questionnaire that all the brokers ask, right? They never really verify one. Exactly. You can you can just fake it. You can fake the, the, the answers, right? Yeah, so this is quite interesting. I think this is also a personal experience. Like last time when I first tried to open up my brokerage account, right? The first few, I say, because I'm not from business degree, ma, then I have never done any, uh, I don't have financial background, business background. And then they don't allow me to open, but I already made some trades on other mm. platforms already, right? Yep. And then they don't allow me. Then after that, I realized that, eh, they didn't really check or so what. So then what I have, what I did was basically answer yes, I have. Then I also have the whoops. They didn't even check. They didn't even They're check. they come after you. Yeah, then after <laughs> that I have, oh, but I'm not in equities anymore. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, so you know, uh, after that I managed. So I think you're right. So regulation in terms of like, uh, you know, allowing equities uh, or like traders to trade, set up an account to trade. Yeah. It's actually not that regulated i guess but then they're coming down very hard on crypto right it feels like if it's again i've no i've no hate against anyone right but to me it's just like if it's related to traditional finance it seems okay yeah i constantly ask myself okay if i play devil's advocate or i put myself in the other shoe am i so bullish that i'm not seeing the dangers of crypto that people are talking about or are they so bearish or like are they so just not seeing the benefits of, of yeah. more people. But, but I guess for, for the government I, or MAS, right, their stance is that they are, uh, they, are, they encourage blockchain development. They do, yeah. Um, and But at the same time, they need to protect retail investors from all the scams and the, mm. the whatever that's happening in the crypto space. Lah. Um, I think so. I think they're in a very tough spot also. Lah. They have to maneuver properly because if they say no to crypto, right, it's very bad for them also. Yeah. Yeah, agree. I, I I think th- th- to me again, they, they haven't stopped people from from opening up accounts. Yeah, which is fine. But I think like stopping the advertising of it means that even as us as media, right? Like if you wanted to work with say uh, an exchange like FTX or KuCoin or Binance to even educate people, and for us for for media to run, we also need some form of like the business model needs to work. Right? So the exchange is that we get money from these exchanges, we get to educate people on on what they need to know about crypto. But by now not allowing those exchanges to work with us to create those sponsor content, then we can't get funds to educate people also about it. Then you have a, you know, a, a yeah. token cycle. Yeah, but it is what it is. La. It is what it is. Yep. And thankfully, we've had people that believe in us, that invest in us to also help educate people about it. La. We can still help people navigate through the world of cryptocurrencies. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this episode of the Chain Debrief Podcast. If you made any changes or updates to your portfolio, do let us know what you've done uh, in the comment section down below. Also, for those who are watching, we've mentioned this about four or five times. These are not financial advice. Please do your own research. And if you don't know where to get started, check out chaindebrief.com. We've got some resources there. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel, like this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.